Maniac has to be very careful. Photon, if he swaps back to Hammer Stance, that's gonna be one dead. Viego, there's the first. Broken Blade's got nowhere to go. No passive. There's gonna be more. Pull the back the follow up. <laughs> it's just a solo. That is a generous assist, League of Legends. Yike, burning, ticking, wants desperately to get the reset, but he can't do it. Caps now, three stacks left on the dash, but he's only gonna be able to run back to base. The Q flash, the shattering strike from Daglas. Shattering hopes of G2 to be in the top two, pushing them down. Fnatic fans elated. Welcome back to the LEC. Hello, everyone. We are joined with Daglas from Vitality. Congratulations on your win against G2. Something we touched up on today was that the LEC, anything can happen, so... You guys won against GG, how does that feel? I mean, it fe feels great to will win last game of the regular split. I think we are in, in form that we are preparing for playoffs and we want to show in our last game that we are ready for playoffs. Yeah, I completely agree. I think you guys have been scaling up, especially since last split to now. It's been insane amount of improvement. I've been really impressed with the way the teams uh, like come together at the last point. It's been really good. Yeah, particularly when we're looking at this game, uh, we're looking at G2, a team that necessarily isn't the greatest when it comes to that early game. And the composition that you picked, the play style that you went for, it felt like that was something that you were looking to survive to then be able to scale into that later game. Well, I think uh, our Preparation against G2 was really good. I think our coach Carter and Pat did a really good job before. And we had a really good plan for the like first for the early game. Mm -hmm. And I think it just today I think G2 made some mistakes that we punished. Mm. So that's what put us. Yeah. So, the elite. Sorry to cut you off. Something I've noticed you guys do on Vitality, right? Whenever your backs are against the wall, it feels like you will just draft five comfort lanes. You have Photon on his Jace. You have Hilly on his Rakan. I think he has something like a 60% win rate. It's most played champion by far. Your rel, of course, is synonymous with Rel by now. Um, is this something you come into the day with, you know, we're going to concede lane prior. We're going to concede, you know, uh, winning lane matchups to make sure we have full comfort and that's going to bring us over the finish line. Is that something that actively is a discussion? I think that is definitely one thing that yep. we are looking forward to. For today, our plan was uh, that we want to like remove comfort zone of enemy spot lane, yep. so then they don't have prior. Mm. I think we did that, and we put ourselves in a really good spot. Yeah, looking at particularly how you were approaching the ball, and it was also the mid lane that felt a little bit heavy on the focus. Particularly, we have a B-roll that we'd like to show you from the gank on Caps. I felt like there was a lot of pressure on there as well. Could you talk us through the thought process here? Well, I think uh, we spotted like enemy Ari worth level one. So that meant that Viego should be behind her, level three. But in game, we knew we hard stomp 2v2, so we just hard force this play. Mm. So, using the info of the, knowing the ward was placed down and knowing that you could pull this off because of the 2v2 uh, was the decision making there. All right, it seems like you guys are playing a lot better 2v2. Can you tell me about your improvement? Because I feel like a lot of uh, play people were down on you, like especially in the last split, but it feels like in recent games, you've really stepped up, no? Um, would you say so? I have like. Worse and better games. Yeah. But I think it's all about the confidence. Like, game by game, I'm getting more confident and I'm playing more aggressive, I would say. Yeah, confidence is key, and you guys have showed it. So, congratulations once again on locking playoffs. Looking forward to see you guys in the BO3 series. Uh, we're going to be heading over to our casters because we have KC going up against BDS. A lot of stakes on the line here. So, Dracos and Dagda, please do break this one down. All right, everybody at home. It's class. It's so cool. I'm going to make this very clear. BDS win, it's simple. It's not that complicated. We'll talk about that in a second. The cool situation. Yeah. Sorry, BDS, throwing you under the bus here. If KC win, there is a three-way tie where KC would first play against SK, 
the winner of that match would then play against Rogue. So that would mean two more games, that would mean two tiebreakers, and a hell of a lot more League of Legends. And the reason Rogue get to kind of be the top seed in this three-way elimination is because they have beaten SK and they've beaten Carmine Corp, so they are technically the ones with the head-to-head uh, the -head victory. So, so I'm excited to see how this one pans out. As am I. If BDS win, KC are eliminated, our types of KC fans, and then only Rogue and SK will play a single tiebreaker game. So either way, we get a tiebreaker. The only question is, do we get one or two? I want two. I'm going to say it. Sorry, <laughs> BDS. I want two. I don't know why. Maybe it's self-destructive, but I just want more League of Legends. Casey, three back-to-back -back games to try to cement themselves in the playoffs. I can't think of a better story or a better way to end the week, I mean, especially with this fan or this group of... Carmine Corp fans. Because the thing is, it doesn't really change a huge amount for BDS, right? No, BDS They're still in the same know. position, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's more, we just get to see more Sick League of Legends, where it's yeah. stakes. The, the real loser in this situation isn't BDS, it's SK, who would then have to play two tiebreakers yeah. to make their way out. But we'll focus one game at a time. Again, reminder, one tiebreaker regardless, two tiebreakers if KC win. We'll keep reminding you over the course of this game, and I'm sure the AD will cover it as well. For now, though, Varus, Oriana, Zinzao, Bandaway, Callista, Karma, and Rumble to follow. And the debate here for Casey, what do they want to lock in first? A lot of people with this first pick buy. A lot of people with the first pick AD carry. Who's vulnerable to buy? It's a tough call. I think it'll be buy. I think, uh, although, to be fair, thinking back to last year, Bo was not an exceptional buy. So uh, definitely went a little over aggressive and didn't have a way back out. Yeah. So we'll have to see, especially with the slight improvements we have seen to Carmen Corp, whether he's a little bit more on the same page with his team or whether he gets caught out. But we'll have to see what the response is going to be here for BDS. I think you end up going towards Zeri here. You make sure that you're going to be fine there. And then it's a question of what does Shea want to try and take into the jungle? Or are you just an RE priority team? Do you really want to just go back towards that comfort for Nuke? Ari, not a bad option into the Vi. Yes, there is the point click CC of the vibe, but you can kind of dash away in the duration of it, give yourself some space to work with. Maokai would be a very defensive pick. Lee Sin would be more fun. But Rel has looked really good. Uh, honestly, this entire week especially. It was a bit shaky, I think, in the earlier weeks of spring, but this week, the teams have tried to close out their season. A lot more confidence on the engages. And Casey not debating. I think the Celia makes a lot of sense. Obviously, this is a reliable level six duo. Really hard for Team BDS to pick anything in the mid lane that is not incredibly vulnerable to the Talia and Vi combination, but the Smolder will come through. And I doubt it's a topside flex. Yes, we'll have access to the Nico. And frankly, this is my favorite pick for most mid laners in the league. Nico looks so damn good. Just the reliable, again, reliable CC and important matches. I will take over anything else. No, I think it'd be Nico. I think yeah. the Nico, as you say, works well. You've already got a lot of your damage coming through in the Zeri, so just being able to enable her is more your your big opportunity. Plus, Realist, you know that Adam is going to take some variant of AD damage in the top lane, whether it's an Aatrox, an Olaf, or an Ekton, whatever along those lines it might be. So we'll have to see, though, how aggressive you can play here as BDS, because the clock is a tick, and you've got the, the smolder on the opposite side. So for KC, they have the chance to just try and play through mid-jungle, Keep the pressure in the bot lane, give this motor time to scale, and it's BDS who need to be the ones making those plays. Definitely. I think it's always a bit tricky when you have the Zeri early on. She just doesn't do that much damage. Post six, once you have access to the ultimate and your support, if it is an aggressive support, has more levels, maybe an ignite. You can't put down a lot of kill pressure, but KC waiting on that support pick, trying to get, get as much information as they can before they decide what they want Targamas to bring out. The Volibear taken, the Renekton taken from Cabo, not wanting to have any more reliable CC to set up either the Talia or the Vi. They, there's a question here for BDS though, is like, how greedy do you go in the bot lane? Like, do you go for Zeri Lulu? Knowing you're against Smolder, you're like, hey, you can go for it. I, I'm kind of with your wincing face on this one, Draco, which is, I think, take engage, take some sort of um, roaming support here for Labrov that can get him buffed, maybe even throw the, the, the rel down to him, but just get something that can play more aggressive on the map and not try and match the scaling with the scaling. Definitely is an option. I think Lulu is a champion that can be very strong, but I'm I'm a big fan, uh, as you may have noticed, Rob, of champions with like a high output floor. Like no matter what you do in the lane phase, they do something. Lulu yeah. is not one of those champions. If you fall behind, if you're not able to push an advantage, uh, it'll be tough. Of course, any champion very likely to be able to push their advantage against Smolder early on. So we'll see. BDS, do they want to save their counter pick for Cabo? Do they want to, or sorry, yeah, for Adam, or do they want 
to save it for LeBron. I think he could just take the Aatrox here if you really want to and say, hey, look, incredibly strong. We actually see a high priority now. Okay. okay, but yeah, they are actually going to give the rail down to Labrov. They're going to get the lease in for Sheo. Very strong mid jungle here again. Good lockup, good setup here for the lease in, which is all he really wants. And then it becomes a question mark of what does Adam want to try and bring out into that top side? Brom going to be the response here into the rail. Brom, good in a lot of situations. Unbreakable, a very powerful ability, but only blocks the damage output essentially reliably of the Zeri. Pop Blossom still going to be a threat from Nuke no matter what they do. Yes, you can um, take the Tangle Barbs out of the equation, the Blooming Burst, but it's you know still something that has to be respected. We'll see how well Targamus can pile with the champion, but I like this pairing. Jace on the top side for Cabo Shard, certainly a bold call, but we've seen two good Jace games so far today, which is a bit uncharacteristic. We're a bit wishy-washy on Jace here, I'm not gonna lie, but we've seen one from Photon, one from Odo as well. Maybe Cabo can add his to the mix. I think the thing is, though, it kind of means that Bo has to play more towards Cabo, and it's not something that we've seen traditionally with KC, where Bo is willing to, like, shadow Cabo so we can get a wave crash or set up vision for him and that kind of stuff, right? So I think this is where we will see a lot more attention of up towards getting that control for the Jace in that top side, especially against the Olaf. Like, you can just run down the Jace if one of these undertoes lands. So, Bo definitely gonna need to pay a little bit more attention to top side than he would to bot lane in this regard. Yeah. Pre six, you know, Adam's still gonna have ghosts, so it's just hard to get away from the Olaf. Yes, you have the thundering blow, the Jace hammer form. E, is it enough to keep Adam away? But at the same time, as we saw against SK, part of the reason they are in this tiebreaker scenario now, couldn't close against Adams Olaf. We'll see if Casey do it a little different. You can hear the passion of the Casey fans in our studio here in Berlin. Always a pleasure to have them. But if we want to bring them back into playoffs, this is one of three wins they will need to get back to back to back. You win here, then you play a tiebreaker against SK for the right to play a tiebreaker against Rogue. And BDS, Already kicking things off with a creative level one. Could put KC at disadvantage. Luckily, Targamus going to be able to walk away. I actually thought that was going to be so massively big brain from BDS for a second. So you can see already this ward that's been placed on this top side here. This is coming through from Carmine Corp because essentially they know, hey, we want to make sure Olaf isn't hiding in the jungle. We want to make sure Cabo Shard is able to get some vision control on this top side so we can hop in and out of these bushes and get that wave push that he needs. And BDS in response, I thought they were going to go in just hyper aggressive in that bottom side and try and invade, believing that KC were going to go for that play on the top side. But um, I think with Nuke, one, taking the Q start rather than taking E for the follow up, and Labrov not being the one to set up for the play, BDS is going to back away instead. So BDS picking off, giving Shea a bit of a leash, hoping to keep up the pace of that jungle clear. I'm caught off guard. That is the first skin I have seen where Lee Sin very noticeably has hair and is throwing me off. He has a big majestic ponytail and it is messing with my brain. <laughs> yeah, we took it all off of Mirwin and gave it to Lee Sin. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, Mirwin. Locks for love, Mirwin. Good on you. Had to donate. He looks great. Yeah, he does. Give him a shaved head. Upset again. Oh, God. Smolder stuff. Smolder. Not good early. Scale's good. Needs to CS, needs to hit enemy champions with ability. But in this case, if LeBron's just going to walk in and eat a bunch of free damage, you're going to feel pretty good about that one. But I think this is a really, I'm sorry to say, a cool smolder composition. Because essentially what you want to do is KC, right, is play through mid and your... Oh, hang on. Ooh, flash committed now. Q comes in from Targamus. Doesn't have level 2, doesn't have the unbreakable upset. Not going to be too effective, but Targamus forced to flash out. Good play from LeBron on the second engage there. Okay, so I was about to say it's sick because essentially you can play for sides with your solo laners and just let upset free farm in mid. He'll eventually get control because he just one shots the wave and you get to stack. That's perfect for you. That's not a big win though for Targamus, who I might have to hold off because. Shea with the setup, the follow is there, the knockback from Sinking, the flash out to Sinking, the Blooming Gloves gets hit! First blood for BDS, well played by Nuke and Shea. Just about able to clip him on the backside with that auto attack as well. Sets him up perfectly. And now this is starting to be alarm bells ringing, right? You've already lost Targamus' flash on that bot side. Easy setup then for Sheo to try and come back into that bot lane, especially with Hex flash. And as well, Saken burning his flash to try and escape. Nuke just going to shove in this wave. I think Sheo just there to try and support him. But really great stuff in the early game from BDS. Right now, the winning part of the lane, or at least where they have pressure, is top lane for Cabo, but that can fade away and Axe connects if Lee Sin is there to follow up. Cabo's advantage can disappear in the blink of an eye. We know scaling is still the name of the game for the side of KC, but falling this far behind early on, giving up some of these advantages in lane can 
give BDS the angle to snowball much faster than initially expected. Bow at least ahead in jungle CS for now. Not going to turn into a gold lead, though, because of the assist that Shao was able to get, but maybe he can contest this red buff. Pressure is there for Cabo on the top side. Shao has to careful even being here. Good damage coming in. Relentless force there, as well as the denting blows, but now Nuke first on the roam. Bo? Bo has to be careful. Flash out. Now going through. Vault Breaker there. He does not want to hit on a Nuke. Shao now Flash got to safety, but it's Nuke who's in trouble. The flick back is clean. Sonic Wave is there, but Shao does not want to take it. KC finding a kill on the top side. They needed to burst out Bo immediately, but they weren't able to do so. You had the push for Cabo in that top side and taking it to come across as well. Targus now is hovering around mid lane, but I don't think you're going to get anyone from BDS coming through. But you had to play off a very short timing window here for Nuke and Shao. And with Shao taking so much damage early and Bo turning aggressive onto Shao as well here. With the uh, the passive proccing, Shao has to ditch. Shao also not able to follow up on this tiny little Sonic Wave that goes wide. Ooh. And then Bo able to finish off the kill there. Really nice stuff from Carmine Corp working off the pushing waves. Yeah, pretty bold play, to be honest. Shao maybe shouldn't have been there, but the fact that they're able to fully commit to that one, relying on Bo's flash advantage to get him away from the burst that would come in from Nuke, makes the play work out for them in the end. In the meantime, upset. Fully committed to his role as a scaler, as is Ice. Double coal coming out in the bottom lane. But still a 300 gold lead in the mid lane for the side of BDS, but a 300 gold lead for Bo on the opposite side for KC. Potentially something they can play around and look to leverage more, getting closer to level six, about to tick over to level five. Yeah, I think they're not going to be able to do too much for Bo at the moment. I think you do want that level six, as you say, but you need to clear your top side out before you can get that. Uh, you also would like to try and play off of getting Nuke dead in that mid lane when you hit that level six, but I think the flash might just be up before you can really get that uh, opportunity to play towards that as well. So I imagine instead we might actually try and see him. Well, honestly, I was going to I was gonna say bot, but you don't really have a huge amount of pressure on bot side. And even if you try and go top, Adam just presses or and the, the gank's dead, right? Yeah. So I think it is a case of try and play for some sort of timer here on towards nuke, or at least like get a push in mid, where Staken can then use his own ult to help you and support you if you go and play for a different side lane. LeBron roaming up, not spotted, but pings are out at least a little bit. Bo will clear out the grubs. Now they know exactly where he is positioned. They were already picking the grubs earlier, anticipating they would clear topside into that option. Taken, no flash from the initial play. Sonic Wave connects, but they see Bo. Don't want to overcommit here. Just continues to step in, knowing Targamus is there. Aggressive maneuver for Bo. I'm surprised BDS didn't try to turn onto the Vi, but aren't confident that they have enough damage. They didn't know where Targamus was. They just knew he'd reset, and Bo really wanted to try and get that chunk so he could play for Raptors. Most of them already gone to Shio, but okay. Ooh. If either of those skills had connected, that might have been a very different story, but luckily Shio gets hit by neither. Bo Nuke is still six. going in. Smite is there. Nuke is six, but Bo manages to get away. Nuke hitting absolutely nobody, but Bo still getting cut down here. Sagan doesn't have the follow up damage. It's over aggressive from the side of KC. None of the abilities from either side are landing. And that's just making it easy for Shao to play this one out. Nuke still just on the chase. Sagan going up topside, but Cabo hasn't even moved yet. Yeah, Cabo just wants to try and go for the chip damage on the tower. Don't want to try and overextend. They know that Adam has reset, so if it had really gone badly, he could have tried to move down there. No upset. Taking a little bit of damage off Wise, but he'll be fine. He's going to go for the reset as well. Messi, Messi plays on both sides with the mid laners whiffing a lot of stuff, but the kill goes to BDS. I'm going to have to be careful here too. Zeri has ultimate up, which is a nice little bit of burst to kick things off and a lot of movement speed. Upset, <clears throat> excuse me, has flash, can't get away, but will opt to stay here. Ice just going to push out the wave and back off. That was a weird one, Rob. Yeah. I don't know if I want to watch it back. <laughs> I think it was just, as you say, like the difference was how many of these spells went wide. Saken doesn't get the flick. Targamus doesn't get the initial Winter's Bite. Then as well, Bo is kind of the only one that's actually dealing damage in that scenario because Saken's been forced away by Nuke. It was a, a kind of a comedy of errors, to be perfectly honest. I think the only, <laughs> yeah, the only nice thing for KC in that context is Nuke also kind of whiffed some yeah. spells as well. But ultimately, um, it's just he like that episode. More, it's, a, it's like those episodes of Dragon Ball Z, you know, where you're like, you spend two hours just charging, getting ready and, and charging it, up, and then it aside and exactly. like hits the wall. Yeah. Ooh, Targamus. Man, it must be tough. It must be frustrating to spear a bomb and then whiff. Targamus, not even gonna get the chance to spear a bomb. Picked off by the side of BDS. Stepped uh, pretty far in. BDS just caught him. I have no idea what he was doing. Well, I think he just assumed that there was a recall there. I wasn't entirely sure where people were positioned on the map. Bo going to be forced to ult to try to mitigate the upfront. CC Unraveled Earth. Kickback is good. Follow-up is there. Pacheo put himself in no man's land. It will not matter. However, BDS still so far ahead in the play. KC's 
season starting to fall apart in front of them. 1K gold lead for BDS, three kills ahead. I have no idea what he was doing. Nothing here really seems to make sense for OKC or trying to achieve. You end up, Targum is completely overextending into River. And then when he dies, Bo goes, do you know what? That looked like a great idea. Now Targum goes, let me show you how it's really done, mate. And yep. then goes in again for a third and then time. Goes in. And he's going to succeed. Try, yeah. try again. Back to the grave. Fourth time's the charm, I swear. This is difficult, I think it is safe to say. And while the KC fans remain endlessly passionate, endlessly supportive, um, you know, right now it is not panning out for the KC lineup as they get further behind. Bo now here to clear the vision. And this is a, it's a sad sight. You know, you really want in these final games for, for support jungle to be working well. And while Targamus and Bo have often been in the same place, the plays have not really been working out. Yeah, they've been in the same place, just opposite times. Yep. You know, it's that's the big problem is that they both died in River, but they weren't there at the same time. They were there together at Raptors. They just in spirit. They were also united in missing skills. And that's mm -hmm. I mean, that's rough. You have to imagine that like at this point, if Casey win, you can start to get a little bit of hope. There's momentum on your side. Yes, you have to win two more games, but that little sliver of hope starts to grow into something bigger. But when you fumble like this and you make mistakes, when top lane, which has been doing well, is about to get completely deleted, hope starts to fade away. Adam grabbing a kill, leveraging the power of that Ragnarok Shale already on the second spawn of Grubs. Ice in the bottom lane, taking plates, making sure that Upset cannot farm comfortably. This is just gone from bad to worse for KC. Here comes Mom. But uh, Saken? On the way down, trying to knock up Ice. Knockback flashed away from Ice, still alive for a brief moment. Threaded volley, shut down there for Saken. The start of something for KC. Saken just needed to get in the face of Ice and say, no, I'm having none of, none of this. Needs to get that damage off, manages to land it perfectly. And then Nuke, he's a minion, but I don't know what else he can do. All right, here we are set up on the Drake. Clean comes in. Kickback is there, but will give his life, but the dragon is gone. Something at least small for the side of KC. The shutdown was good. But, I mean, look at the bottom of your screen. It's all red. It's all in favor of BDS. And the bottom lane is getting harder. Yes, Smolder has a hidden, not so hidden scaling component of the stacks. And you can see on his picture, if you look real close, 76 at this moment in time. Not terrible, but not great. Upset's going to need to up the pace here if he wants to be the reason that Casey bring this one back. Yeah, I just, I don't know how Casey tried to bring this back from this position, right? We've seen no linking up between mid jungle. Uh, upset, he hasn't really gotten to a position where he's really scaled to a point where he's threatening. And BDS, they've already started, like dragons are going in their favor. Or sorry, well, they've started to get the dragon stacking underway. They'd be able to play for that at the 25 minute mark, which is maybe where Smolder might have a chance to try and do something. But realistically, I think Upset a little bit too far behind at this stage. Um, and then when you look towards the, or sorry, well, not Upset specifically, but KC a little bit too far behind. And they really want to try and play it through side lanes, right? The whole point is Cabo should have a lead in top. Saken and Bo should have been able to get a lead in mid, but they're behind. You can't play outside lanes from this position, and it means that now BDS would just get to play for a superior team fighting. It's an angle that they have. BDS slowly pushing their vision line forward. Luckily for Casey, they haven't been able to break down a lot of these, or any of these really, tier ones. Cabo's still holding for now. But you can see the setup. They're ready to collapse, and there's not a lot of counterplay when there's this much CC and an Olaf packing a Ragnarok. Oh, Cabo Shard walks in. Devastating. Shattering Strike connects as well. Shea, Ward hop forward, kick back. Are they going to get the kill to Adam? Taking their time. Nope. Shea on a killing spree. Knows he's fed, knows he's powerful. Happy to take that one as Adam. Gets the consolation prize of a couple extra plates. Everything now going in favor of BDS. Yeah, and I, I just feel bad for Cabo Jard in that one. Like, no, none of that vision that was established earlier has been cleared out on that top end. And he needs to try and collect these waves. Otherwise, he just does fall further and further behind and just becomes irrelevant. Like, you can already see he's a full level behind. He's already massively befar, har, far behind in gold. And at this stage, there's nothing you can do. Adam, I'm pretty sure, especially as he hits level 11, should just be able to kill Cabo underneath his own tower at this stage. Yeah. I mean, very often, Olaf feels like a stat check, right? Like, you can either kill him when he Ragnaroks at you, you can dodge the axes, but when he has Ghost and ulti up, you're certainly not getting away from him. Phase Rush can help. The knockback can help when he doesn't have ulti. But when you start to fall behind against this champion, 
Adam just takes over. And there was no response. You can see the bow was just sitting in that bot side uh, map, or in the bot side brush, hoping that maybe he could make something happen, but Ice backed the right the way off. Labrov and Jay were like, cool, we're just going to keep our own jungle safe. So KC get nothing. And again, two minutes now until next Dragon. You've also got foot at the Herald that's about to spawn as well. And KC moving into the area, but maybe with Labrov and Reset, they can pick this up, but this is going to be a really tight timer. Shao clearing out the Raptor camp. We'll likely check this quick sonic wave in. Yep. Knows it's been swatted. Lays down the vision and Olaf has reset. Adam with no TP means man advantage for KC. And it looks like BDS might just give this one up. Upset on the way as well. Meanwhile, Nico split pushing in bottom lane. And uh, LeBrov all the way on the bottom side of the map. Maybe once again trying to catch out Cabo as he goes for the wave. But Harold is a star for KC. Something I don't think that really BDS had to give up. No, I think they could have been in a better position for it, especially if Adam had actually got that top tower or positioned himself for the top tower. But now you're going to have Shao try and match here. The, uh, the right, first, what's the name of that first time? I'm saying Guard Breaker because I'm playing too much TFT. Stride Breaker? Stride Breaker, thank there you. you. Go. It's <laughs> completed for Adam. So if he gets onto things. any of these side laners, <laughs> if you have to chase them down with the slow and that ghost as well. So he becomes significantly more threatening in that position. And with BDS getting first tower as well, we know the Adam Classic got pushed top, is immediately group onto mid wave and see if you can make something happen. It's gonna be up in full force as well. Although I think he is just gonna reset and actually swap with Nuke so he can keep Nuke a little bit more threatening, especially as we look towards Dragon. And still, KC fans endlessly cheering, trying to fill these players with hope, even as the game starts to look hopeless. Upset. I think has had a really solid season individually, but in this game, you know, opting for the smolder. The potential of what it could bring is there, but might not have the time to scale up. They just have to watch, just has to wave clear as the rest of the map falls apart around him. So BDS trying to match KC in the top side. KC assuming BDS are going to try and play for a dragon, but should spot a Cheo here and know that the jig is up. Targamus backing off, Ghost popped, Alt can get popped as well as soon as the CC comes in. Targamus very likely dead. The wall certainly would be good against Olaf if he was on the right side of it. The knockback is there, the ulti fades away. Bo's got nothing left in the tank. But Cheo offering an opportunity for him to get out to safety. Ball breaker might just be enough of the stride breaker there from Adam. And nothing's gonna break his stride as BDS just again take the top side skirmish. Nice job by BDS to read this. It was second dragon for BDS, so Casey were like, okay, we have Rift Herald. Let's try and use a topside, get some gold back in our favor here, something for our solo laners, but BDS just say, cool, we don't mind leaving Dragon at this stage. We get the turnaround play on top side, and we can still go for Dragon anyway. And that's why once they saw Shale here, they're like, oh crap. We know exactly what BDS are about to do. Great flash from Adam over the wall. Shale lands that Sonic Wave as well, which then sets up nicely to try and follow through. Shale, unfortunate there. Could have gotten Saken, but nice flash from Saken to match the kick flash from Shale. But BDS still come out massively on top. And you can see frustration on the face of the KC coaching staff. It's hard. <laughs> I mean, there's not a lot of counterplay when an Olaf is this strong. Even when you're moving in as support jungle, it's textbook. It's how you're supposed to do it. If there happens to be an Olaf in the brush, your man advantage suddenly means very little, especially when Olaf is this fed. But that's the thing, right? I think when we came into this game, we are like, cool, how is Bo going to look in the Vi? What's he going to be able to do? Because realistically, it had to be play for lanes, but it was more lanes playing for Bo. And without him able to capitalize on Nuke having no summoner spells available. That off. Should be able to back away, yeah. No. And, not, and also then not being able to get that vision or the push control for Cabal Shard in the top side. BDS were just able to punish really effectively around those points. So I do think, again, it's kind of coming back to, is this the right champion for a player like Bo? Yeah. I mean, you know, even in the meta, there's a question as to how powerful Vi really oh is. Flash over the wall. <laughs> he wants to make a quick, a merciful execution. <laughs> Didn't use Flash in the last play over the wall. Just managed to ghost pass. I thought I saw him use it too, but he still had it. So obviously did not. It's just a, you what, bro? You what, bro? You said, huh? It's just a second you see the flick back. He's, I mean, he's just, he's already made playoffs. He's still just coming in here, like, completely ruthless. SK behind the scenes somewhere right now, gearing up for a tiebreaker, just going, oh, thank God for that, hold on. Because <laughs> remember, uh, again, if KC win, they have to play SK, and then the winner of that plays Rogue. But if, if KC get knocked out here, if they lose, they're out, and then it's just SK versus Rogue for the final playoff spot, we will always play a tiebreaker for that, even if Rogue own the head-to-head. -head. 
Did he end up for a potential dive on mid? But looks like they're just going to try and uh, sync up with Nuke in the top side. But I think the question then becomes like, what, what is this experiment for Carmine Corp going to be? Because it's been two splits now where we get to see some improvement, but it's clear that it's not a team that is able to get the functionality that they want. And being this close to hitting playoffs, it's kind of heartbreaking that they're not able to just about make it work. Well, and I think that, again, when you look closely, you can see signs of that improvement, but when you look at the scoreboard, you can't. It's exactly the same as it was in winter, of course. In that context, they were down, and then they won the last two, and they were already out. But at the end of the day, 2-7 is 2-7. That is certainly not where KC want to be or where the fans want them to be. And you do have 10 weeks after this to potentially get that back functioning, right? Which you could improve, but at that stage, it's like, do we want to take that time investment? and then maybe try and make it work in summer, try and get to Worlds, but if summer doesn't go well, well then you don't have a huge amount of play time this year. Yeah, and we changed the format slightly. Uh, I mean, placing high in summer is really important regardless of, of championship points, but even then, a, a miracle run doesn't just feel like it would be a miracle, it feels like it would be impossible for KC at this moment, at this level of performance. But, silver lining. On many, many clouds, this split has been smolder. And in a lot of our games, especially in the first week before the hotfix, uh, yeah, it was just an inevitable win condition. This Harold runs past Adam. <laughs> yeah. And will charge. He's not worried about it. He wants to wave instead. Potential play on the top side here. Targibus, Shadow, and Cabo. Bow there as well. Trying to push this wave in. Tangle bar. Does he have numbers? Deleted. Ball breaker forward, now gonna go into the new, but he's on the wrong side of the wall. Flip back is good though, finally the CC layered! It looks like a good start to things, but Ice ulting, and now he's just gonna try to clean up the fight. Unbreakable, protecting Saken, upset, standing behind. Mom up and available, when is it gonna get called in? Ice, skating forward. Do they wanna step up, or are they happy with what they have so far? Sonic Wave connects, resonating strike, will it be there? Unbreakable, the block Ice from falling up any further, the broad may have overstepped here. They're shredding him down, KC! Found the angle, Adam's finally here. But the play's already fizzled. The TP out from Cabo. He knows he's dead. If he doesn't just make it to safety, he doesn't have enough time. They tried to get out just before the frat bro showed up, but unfortunately for Cabo Shard, he got caught right as he was about to leave. <laughs> Nobody wants to get caught in that conversation, but KC <laughs> managed to get the pick and get on out of there. You don't understand, man. His dad owns the dealership, and that is his entire personality. <laughs> Yo, bro, I like that's the, time I like that I that's the, time the angle for bro to Prolog. <laughs> but it, like, you can see here, right? Oh, Olaf, Brolaf re uh, setting in the bot side, trying to get up to the top side. Kick flashed away from from Bo, could have been really nice from Shale, but they do get one. And BDS are trying to buy time where oh, Adam can actually get back into this yeah. fight. But KC, they're actually able to poke and prod as they start to move forward. And that's kind of what they do great with Saken and Cabo Shard here. When the all out comes through with Abrov, just able to flash away from Saken, get the kill on Labrov, and now the ghost comes through from Adam. Yeah. And they've got enough burst damage to finish him off. Kawa's like, I gotta get out, man. He said something about cryptocurrency and Web3. This is not a conversation I want to participate in. Yeah, tried to make him look at his portfolio, but I, <laughs> honestly, I think Kabul Shard, the really, I think it was a good call. The only way you get people out is if you split, otherwise Adam chases you all down. Yeah. So, Look, it was a nice attempt. Well, you weren't you weren't going to outrun him, right? Teleport was really the only angle yeah. to escape. Ultimately, you end up being a sacrificial lamb. You might have just been able to escape, but the vision comes down. Yeah, Good he's been slamming there. energy drinks since like 3 p.m., so he just never ever. You don't understand, man. He's always grinding. Passive income. He's been awake since 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah, that's the secret. Oh, that's a surprise, Olaf. That's not the bush you wanted to go into, but we'll die. Ice on a rampage. I would... Sigma male. <laughs> he's on his grind set. He's unstoppable. They let him into his zone, Rob. That's the one rule. Don't let him into his zone. And now they're in the Baron zone. And BDS going to be very, very happy about this. Still, a lot of members of KC trying to collapse here. Shale is not here. Just to be very clear, no jungler in the vicinity, and we're still going hard on this. Shale coming from behind. KC... See a window of opportunity. Five seconds on Bo. He won't be able to get there, but maybe they can find an angle into the pit. Shao finally gonna make it over the wall. There's no way. Baron will drop. And now KC are in a bit of a difficult position. That acceleration gate not gonna quite hit Targus. Flick back is good on the lower Brav. Some nice poke damage. KC don't have enough damage to finish the kill, sadly. 197 on upset. The timer about to tick over. The stack's about to tick over to 225, but that's a Baron buff and a 7k gold lead on the side of BDS. And a 6 kill Zeri, who's just finished their Infinity Edge. Ice, 
very strong in his own regard as well. And this is the thing, I think Upset, the timer, may have just ticked on that little bit too long. KC need to find ways to get picks, slow down the pace of this game. And at least they're trying to set up to get like bot terror here, or maybe you can then unlock Saken to a slight bit inside lanes. But with Adam as big as he is, it becomes very easy for him again to just chase down people. And that's why like him just showing up here is causing issues already. All right, TP onto the bottom side, another pick onto Bo. If at first they don't succeed, try, try again. But this try bush has been the death of KC. Targum is dying there twice. Bo now wants camaraderie there, at least in death. His BDS gain control of the red quadrant of KC's jungle, looking to break down the bot lane tier two. Labrov zoning KC off the back here. Cabo still trying to push in on top, so numbers advantage once again here for BDS on this bottom side of the map. Shale gonna shove in mid. As BDS gonna link up with him now in the mid lane. Targumus, you need to be very careful here. Shattering Psyche doesn't connect. Saken doing his best to clear the waves. An uproar from the KC fans. Faith unwavering even in the face of defeat, even in the face of two back-to-back. -back. Splits filled with despair. 220 for upset, close. One more wave should do it. He's walking into his own jungle. It's been heavily warded up, but unbeknownst to him, he is completely safe. He'll start to see Nuke on the top side and know they can walk in with a bit more confidence. It's this next wave, it's mid-wave. That's the 225, that's the execution threshold. But it's not a win the game button. You will still need a fight, an opportunity to leverage that advantage or to leverage that strength. And he can't even bring mom to college. And that's the problem. Adam, he's just so strong. And he's just going to continue to push out mid. And now BDS are starting to go into top side again. I just don't think you have the presence on the map right now. Cabo and Saken linked up on that bottom side to get the tower. But that just overexposes you on this bottom side of the map. Or the top side of the map. And again, it's just movement constantly here for BDS. And now we're in the situation we've been in multiple times with Smolder. You're just stalling. You're just holding on. Two and a half items. An extra brutalizer for Cabo. Closer to some additional armor penetration might help tear through Adam. KC fans again shouting themselves hoarse, giving it all. And what it could and seems to be KC's final day on this stage for 10 weeks. You said it. And for some, maybe it's a sign of hope. 10 weeks, you can adjust, you can come back stronger. But for the players in this lineup, it's despair, knowing you have to be so far away from the competitive game for so long. That's the thing, for KC, they're trying to split up the map and see if they can catch people over rotating here for BDS, but BDS, they're not really giving them the opportunity. You'll always see that they're just basically like, they'll push out bot now, but then they'll just immediately drop bot and then start to play off two lanes at every point in time. So at the moment, they're going to push out in that top side of the map. They're going to push out here, they're going to push out here, and then look to establish all this vision in this quadrant. And then you can just play for... Um, your position on towards those towers. Although with Dragon in 50 seconds, there's always the opportunity instead to just try and catch the people as you move in towards here, yeah. Instead, but it's the same idea, right? Is just continue this push, keep yourself in check. And Adam, yeah, he's gonna reset as well. So it is gonna be the Dragon fight coming through here for Soul. And for Casey, entering to bot side is always so risky because if you lose the fight, Ice is already shoving in mid and it makes it so hard to actually try and contest. Yeah. And even if, you know, BDS give up Dragon, cool, it's a second Dragon for KC, whereas they just crack your base. It's so hard for KC to find a good play. Just a hundred different shades of bad, hundred different shades of trading down, hoping, praying to trade even, to buy more time again for Smolder, to get a few more stacks, a few more waves under your mid laner, as even now, Zaken has a bit of a gold lead over Nuke, not much, but perhaps could make the difference in the fight. TP down, there's a top wave. But of course, they know Adam doesn't have TP. KC moving in for the play. Ice clearing out mid wave. KC with first setup. They've got their flanks covered as well, but Adam with flash and ghost up. Nuke wasn't spot on the ward. It's actually been blocked out by a control ward. So Nuke trying to see if he can move into position here. Adam over spotted. the wall. They recognize the wolf now. Upset retreating. The Drake taken. No one objective bounty. Cow manages to take the Drake. And now there's an Olaf trying to tear his way through the backside. The execute isn't enough. Upset cannot get into the fight. He needs to flap onto somebody. He needs to do anything. But he's been isolated. He's been pushed back. The miracle 
steal is not enough. The kickback from J.O. is clean. It's a triple from Cabo. They look to finish the job right here. It started all right, but BDS not going to go home empty-handed. But KC will find themselves going home exactly that. Nothing to pick up as BDS will trump them in their place and deny them that spot in playoffs. Domination just about from start to finish. One or two tiny glimmers in the early game, but it's just gone from bad to worse. For the second split in the row, KC will finish 2-7. SK and Rogue will play our only tiebreaker, and BDS will end their season 5-4. and four. A very clean game from BDS. Again, it's kind of going back to what has been their bread and butter. Get control in the early stages, start to play round two, like try and get your control into that bottom side as well. And I mean, really, really well played. Honestly, Adam looking great on this Olaf as always as well. Definitely did. Of course, you can vote for your key player of the game at LBC on X. Cheo, Nuke, or Ice are your options. Commiserations, of course, to KC. And again, key player of the game. We talked about it a moment ago, but make sure you get your votes over there. I mean, I'm kind of heartbroken for KC. I think it's been, and they've tried so hard to get everything to work, but unfortunately just hasn't been the case. And now when they had that glimmer of hope to see now that Rogue might just overshoot them in the standings and take that spot is going to be heartbreaking for them. But on the upside, as you say, BDS would look great. Your key player of the game, as you said, she uh, Sheo, Nuke, or Ice, you can vote now at LEC on X. Yeah. KC, back to the drawing board. Tough split. BDS will see them in the best of threes. We'll see them in the next stage. See who they're drawn against after our tiebreaker. For now, we regroup, we recenter an interview with Adam after the break and the tiebreaker ahead. Don't go anywhere. Welcome everyone to the Kia Tilt Proof Challenge. We're here to see if four gamers can stand up to the test. Well, this oh! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> ah, me I think I lost. I'm so happy that I didn't eat before. Red Bull gives you wings. Done. Done. There we go. Break? Break. <sighs> Even the biggest champ needs a break. I'm tired. Me too. So, uh, what do you think? On to the next one? Let's go. Come on. Oh.